What is a solar eclipse? Chapter 5. The View from Earth. If the weather is clear in the path of totality, sky watchers are in for quite a sight. Scientists have divided the steps of a total solar eclipse into first contact, second contact, totality, third contact, and fourth contact. Through all the steps, except for totality, people must wear special filter glasses to watch an eclipse. First contact happens when the circle of the moon appears to touch the outer circle of the sun. Then it appears to cross over the sun's surface. The sun becomes a crescent shape. First, it will look like a cookie with a bite taken out of the edge. Over the next hour or so, the crescent will get thinner and thinner. Less of the sun's light reaches Earth, so the daylight starts to look a bit strange. Shadows get sharper. The temperature drops. Animals act confused. They rely on the light from the sun to know the difference between night and day. They think night is coming. Birds may stop singing and head toward their nests. Nocturnal animals that come out only at night, like bats and owls, sometimes start to stir. Farm animals may head back to their barns. Shadow bands appear on the ground or sides of buildings. These are twinkling ripples of light and shadow. Scientists are not sure what causes shadow bands, but they believe these light waves are likely in effect caused by the sun's changing light shining through the gases of Earth's atmosphere. If the sun is shining through leaves on a tree, the shadows on the ground will look crescent shaped. If you spread out your fingers and place one hand on top of the other, you can make these shadows too. Hold your hands so the sun shines through them and you may see crescent shaped shadows on the ground. When the sun is just a thin sliver, you may see Bailey's beads. These small points of light last only a second. They are caused by the sunlight shining through the valleys on the moon's surface. The moon's bumpy surface may also cause what is called the diamond ring, a brief bright point of light shining through a deep canyon on the moon. Second contact is the moment that the moon completely covers the sun. Totality has begun. This is the only time it is safe to take off viewing glasses. Without the bright light of the photosphere, the day becomes as dark as night. The sun's corona appears like a feathery halo of light around a dark center. The thin reddish ring of the chromosphere may also be visible at the base of the corona. In the dark sky around the sun, stars and planets that are never visible in the daytime now appear. Totality lasts a few minutes. Viewing glasses must be worn again before third contact. The moment the moon starts moving from in front of the sun, the crescent of the sun appears to grow larger until the moon looks as if it's just touching the edge of the sun. This is fourth contact. Then the moon no longer blocks the sun's light. The eclipse is over. The whole process takes about three to four hours. Safety first. It is amazing to watch a solar eclipse, but it is not safe for your eyes. The sun is so bright that you can burn your retina, the part of your eye that takes in light. And looking at the sun through a camera, binoculars, or a telescope makes the sun's rays even more intense. If you look directly at the sun for any length of time, you will damage your eyes. You can look at the sun with special solar eclipse glasses. These are not regular sunglasses. They are made specifically for eclipse viewing with approved filters that block out the harmful rays of the sun. The only time it is safe to look directly at an eclipse is when it is in totality and the circle of the moon is completely covering the photosphere of the sun. You can take off your glasses at this time, but you must put them back on before totality ends. You can also watch an eclipse without looking directly at it with a pinhole projector. All you need to make one is an index card and a piece of paper. Punch a hole in the index card. Place the paper flat on the ground. Then stand with your back to the sun and hold out the index card so that the sun's light shines through the hole and down to the paper.
you will see the changing shape of the sun on the paper. Scientists have learned a lot by studying eclipses. They learned how the sun, earth, and moon move, and computer models have helped them accurately predict eclipses. Space organizations all over the world work together to share information and watch eclipses from different points of view. The International Space Station, a laboratory orbiting the Earth, sends back data from space. Scientists sometimes get help collecting data from citizen scientists. A citizen scientist is a person, not a trained scientist, who records what they see and sends the information to space organizations. This is fun for the citizen scientist and helpful to the professional scientist. The more data the organization receives, the more they can learn about eclipses. You could be a citizen scientist too. Tools, technology, and people working together help everyone learn more about eclipses. There are always new ideas to test and discover. The cycle of eclipses promises there will always be more total solar eclipses to view. Almost 70 will happen in this century. Eclipse maps show where and when they will happen. Perhaps you can travel to see an eclipse. Maybe one will pass right over your town or city. Wear an eclipse glasses, look to the sky, and see the solar system in motion. The view from space. We know what an eclipse looks like in the sky from our point of view on Earth. But what would a solar eclipse look like from space? The International Space Station, ISS, is a spacecraft that orbits Earth. Astronauts from several countries live and work there. They do experiments and study to learn more about travel in space. From that view high above, astronauts have also, also have been able to observe solar eclipses. An astronaut in the ISS can see the shadow of the moon on the Earth's surface. It looks like a circle or oval. They can observe the darkest umbra in the center of the shadow and the fuzzy penumbra around it. On Earth, the areas of land or ocean under the umbra are experiencing a total eclipse. Those under the penumbra are seeing a partial eclipse. You don't have to be an astronaut to see what an eclipse look would look like from high above. Satellites orbiting the Earth also send back pictures during eclipse. We can get a space view without ever leaving the ground. The moon's shadow during a solar eclipse, as seen from the ISS. There it is.